Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com and to Pi Week, a week in which I'm going to use this Raspberry Pi 2 as my only computer. Now, admittedly, I picked a week in which I won't be doing any video editing or any 3D modeling because the Pi really wouldn't cope with that. But everything else I do on a computer this week, everything social, everything work based, will be done on my Raspberry Pi. So I won't be using any smartphone apps, any smartphone internet access, any tablets, any laptops, any desktops. Everything's going to be on the Pi. And I hope as we go through this video diary, I'll learn a few things about the Pi myself and also pass on quite a few tips about how to use the Pi for all sorts of computing purposes. Right, well, uh, here I am on the afternoon of day one with my first uh, video diary entry. This is my uh, setup for the week with the uh, Raspberry Pi. You can see it's there connected into wired uh, Ethernet. It's got a keyboard and a mouse connected, and it's also got a, an extension to help me connect in other things I'll come to in a second. I've got the power supply there so I can flick it on and off in a switch socket. And uh, up here I've got a number of different uh, configurations of operating systems which I can plug in and use across the week. Now, I've already used the Pi to do some uh, email checking and to print out some documents I need for Monday. But I've also today, as you know, been filming. And across the week I'm going to have to want to back up the things I'm going to be filming. And a lot of my filming will be done on smaller cameras this week for doing a video diary entries out and about with the Pi. That will be shot into SD card. I can just plug those into the Pi with an adapter. But I also shoot, for example, this morning onto a device like this, which is an Atomos Ninja, which shoots onto one of these, which is an SSD um, cartridge. And you can plug that, I'm going somewhere honestly, you can plug that into a USB uh, caddy like that, and this therefore plugs in to take files off the device. And what I want to do is to take files from this and in future from SD cards and to store them on things like a portable SSD I can take with me and also on a larger device like this, this Lacey Drive. So you might be thinking, well, that's fine then, Chris. All you've got to do is to connect these directly to your Pi. But if you're running Raspbian, as I am here, Raspbian will read a NTFS disk like, uh, like this one, but it won't write to it and it won't read all right to an XFAT disk like this, or indeed I've got an XFAT USB key you may remember from a few um, videos ago. So what I need to do is to go to Raspbian and to open up a terminal, and we're going to install a few extra facilities. So first of all, I'm going to install the uh, ability to read and write an NTSF drive. For that, I need to do a root command, sudo command, apt get, and I'm going to install NTFS and it's what 3G, I think that should pull down NTFS compatibility. And there we are after a little bit of sorting itself out, it's done that. I'll just make this window slightly smaller so you can see the bottom of it on the screen properly. I'm also going to install the ability to access an XFAT drive, which is going to be sudo apt get install, and it is xfat and views on the end, I'll enter on that. Yes, we want to do this, of course we do. And there we are. And finally, I'm going to install the ability to uh, eject drives, which um, is not, again, natively here in Raspbian. Raspbian's pared down to be absolutely as minimum as it can, but uh, for using a Pi for a lump at a time, that's not a good idea. So we'll install eject, and there we are. And uh, finally, to make all this work, I've got to do a reboot. So I will uh, close things down and get on with rebooting the Pi. And when it comes back, it should work with NTFS uh, and XFAT drives. So here we are again, rebooted. I'll now plug in our uh, drives, so I can plug in, say, first of all, the uh, Atomos. Oh, that's, that's come up, that's pretty good, the Atomos SFD. And there we are. Oh, yes, we can see some files I shot this morning. And I can plug in, if I can find the wires here, a lot of things going on. You can't see, but you know what it looks like. And we also will get, hopefully, there, the integral SSD. Yes, that's fantastic, and that will open up as well. So, as I say, those are the files I was shooting this morning on the Atomos Ninja. There's no hope that Pi knows how to read one of those files. Most Windows PCs can't read one of those files, so 
let alone a poor old uh, Raspberry Pi. But on this uh, integral drive, I've put myself a folder there for uh, storing things. And so I know actually the take I want is uh, that one. It's not that big for me, only 345 meg. And I can just go and copy that and we can copy it across to our uh, integral SSD. This of course will take a while because USB 2 actually it's not too bad is it for USB 2? And of course you might be say a photographer who wants to shoot things on your camera and use your Pi as a means of backing them up to another drive. That's a perfectly reasonable thing you want to do in a real world using your Raspberry Pi. But anyway we've now backed up just about there a file from one drive to another. Now the final thing I want to show you is that we've now got uh, two drives on our computer here and you probably think right last thing we need to do is to eject the drives so go to the file manager open up um, media to see our external uh, media there there they are look and you could go oh i'll just um oh go to eject oh i can't go to eject uh, because even with eject installed you can't do that on the pi so i've got to show you how you would safely eject the drive and to uh, all those of you who say just pull it out that really isn't a good idea so uh, what I've done is to load up the uh, terminal and I'll just shrink it down for the purposes of uh, showing things to you easily on screen. To see what drives are actually connected to your Pi in the terminal you type df, disks file system, and it'll show you all the drives currently loaded including the removable ones we put in our cells here, the uh, AVR SSD and the integral SSD. So if I wanted to eject one of those I'd type sudo, root command as we often have, and eject as we installed earlier, and I can now go say dev and uh, SDA1, which is a drive here, which is the Evo. Enter that disk file system again. We can just check it's gone. And I could do um, sudo eject and um, dev and uh, SDB1. And uh, of course it would do the other one and it would now have gone. So there we are, we've proved we can do some good data wrangling on the Pi, and I suspect over the coming week as I shoot lots of video, I'll be doing a lot of this to back it all up to keep everything nice and safe. Right, here we are on day two, and as you can see I booted into a Ubuntu Mate, which uh, I find is a little bit better in terms of browsing experience, as I'll show in a second. But uh, the first thing I wanna show is that yesterday I was mounting drives under Raspbian with uh, XFAT and NTFS. I've discovered today if I plug in here, for example, a XFAT USB key, it will, in a second, I think, yes, appear on my desktop, there it is, and open up, which is great. So in fact, if you want to do a lot of data wrangling, rather than do all that stuff I did in Raspbian yesterday, you could just use Ubuntu Mate. And uh, the great thing is, when you've actually accessed your files, done your copies, if you uh, right click on my desktop, there's an eject button as well, which is, is fantastic, isn't it? Anyway, the reason I'm here today is to do some social media stuff. It's uh, Sunday afternoon, so YouTube hopefully has just automatically uploaded my regular Sunday afternoon video at two o'clock. And I'm gonna use the Chromium browser. If you want to get the Chromium browser on uh, either Raspbian or under Ubuntu Mate, just run the Mate terminal, or obviously have a terminal under Raspbian if you're under there, and you want to type sudo apt get and install, and it's chrome, um, you'd have guessed that bit, hyphen browser, you probably wouldn't have guessed that bit. I don't need to execute that command because I've done it already, but that will get you chromium on uh, Ubuntu Mate. And if we just get rid of that therefore, I'm gonna go run into chromium, I've already run it up because it takes an age to run, but when it's running, it's fantastic. I found it's the best browser on the Pi for actually accessing interactive services. Like for example here is a YouTube, which is running and it seems that it has uploaded my new video for me automatically, that's very clever of it. Someone's disliked it already, someone always does. Let's see what's going on. Um, we've got, hopefully, this sort of functionality is working. There we are, someone's, uh, in fact lots of people are uh, commenting on the video, that's very nice of them isn't it? Look at this, all these people down here, fantastic. And I should be able to, on this machine, go into my comments. This is the sort of functionality, it doesn't work, I found on all browsers on the Pi. You can't answer your comments and everything, but Chromium works both under Raspbian and also even better, I find, under um, Ubuntu Mate. There we are. There's a comment I need to respond to. I'll just respond to uh, that comment. And there we are, uh, we can see it's working. I've obviously got a few comments to answer here, so I will go on 
and um, do that in a second. And hopefully it'll actually also work with the uh, analytics. I'm a YouTuber, I spend all my time looking at my analytics. It's critically vital you look at your analytics at least 12 times an hour, I think. Yes, here it is, look, it's going to load in and we'll get the uh, standard seven day view, but the one I really want is the real time. I always obsess about the real time when the video has just gone up. See if it's going to be working. Isn't it great what you can do on a Raspberry Pi? And uh, there we are, look, it's, um, oh yes, the new video is, is picking up views, so everything is working. So there we are, that's today's task to uh, see if I can work in social media okay on the Pi, and I can using this service. So I'll go back to uh, answer my comments, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Right, here I am again, back at uh, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, today, I spent most of my time teaching uh, tutorials at my, my former employer at the University of Nottingham, and therefore I've not been doing computer-related stuff. But I've come back this evening, I've been checking some email, and I'm also preparing to deliver a lecture tomorrow. And so here I've got my lecture running on, on the Pi. You'll see I'm back um, in uh, Raspbian, which I think is my best bet for doing this uh, at the moment, and I printed out my uh, copy of my, uh, my slides to make some notes on it all worked perfectly well, came happily out the printer of my long USB lead connected to the Raspberry Pi. So my hope is tomorrow to actually deliver my lecture from the Raspberry Pi. So I've got it all uh, connected up. In theory, I can make it work from my little Rai keyboard. Yes, it's going to work. It's worrying if it doesn't even work here. So I'm going to take the Pi with me, connect it by HDMI into a lecture system, and hopefully run it from the Rai so I can bring up my slides like that, but in a very large lecture room. So tonight, not much to say as I'm preparing for tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be out on location, and we'll see if you can deliver a lecture from a Raspberry Pi. Right, here we are, it's about midday on a Tuesday. I've just finished doing my lecture from the Raspberry Pi. There it is, look, the Pi plugged into the uh, lecture system here in this 500-seater uh, lecture theatre, and all projected up onto the big screen. It actually worked. Raspbian projected on a massive screen, showing a presentation, and uh, it, it worked very well indeed. So I think I've proved you can make a professional presentation from a Raspberry Pi. You can take your Raspberry Pi with you, plug it into a lecture system, and it works. And indeed, I'll remember this in the future. It might be easier to take around a Raspberry Pi in my pocket to make a presentation than a, a laptop or a netbook. Final thing to tell you uh, today is that last night after I'd spoken to you, I did a very special piece of shopping online on the Raspberry Pi. I actually bought a Raspberry Pi Zero. I actually found one in stock. So we can look at a Raspberry Pi Zero on this channel very soon. Anyway, that's it for me today, being still slightly surprised that all of this worked, and I'll speak to you again tomorrow. Right, it's now a Wednesday evening, and uh, once again I've been doing standard sort of email and web stuff on the Pi document stuff, here back under Ubuntu Mate. But I thought we'd have a little look at the opportunities to use the Pi for uh, photo editing. Now under Ubuntu Mate you have pre-installed this uh, photo application called Shotwell, which shows you the uh, pictures on your drive, you've got all the standard facilities for bringing in photos from your camera or, or from elsewhere on, on the Raspberry Pi and its drives, and fairly standard sort of photo stuff. And you can, for example, pick up that nice photograph of a bit of Cress. A little bit of lag, as you can see, as it brings an image in. This is a very large image. I think it's about a 10 uh, megapixel image. And if we zoom in, you can see just how big that is, but it still, it does work on the Pi, and you can actually zoom in and out, and it's, it's, it's keeping up, which is, I think, pretty impressive. And you can do, in this packet, some basic enhancements. So I can click on that, and it'll take a second, I think, but eventually, yes, there we are. We may think that's better, we may not, but you can do it in this package. However, if you want to do really good photo manipulation, I wouldn't use this. I will go back to our old friend GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program, which you can install on the Pi. If you want to install it on the Pi, you just go to your terminal and you use this command here sudo apt-get install gimp. I don't need to do that because I've already done it, so I can just run the program up straight away. So I'll run up the uh, gimp there. It'll start coming up. As it comes up here, I point out I'm doing this under Ubuntu Mate. 
But if you are in Raspbian, you can run GIMP under Raspbian, just the same, running exactly the same sudo command to install it on your Pi. But uh, here we are under Ubuntu Mate, it's coming up. There, it takes a little time to load, but it's not bad, is it? That was, uh, there was no editing in that coming up there, it comes up pretty quickly. And we can maybe go and uh, load in an image. You know, we've got here basically Photoshop functionality running on our Raspberry Pi. If I bring in, say, a picture of a Raspberry Pi, it loads in. There it is. I might want to do, say, I don't know, uh, crop that down a bit. So I might, say, uh, go into the uh, thing there, maybe do a fixed ratio crop, maybe 6, 4, and maybe take, I don't know, middle of that image there. A little bit of a lag here, you can see, but it still works. And I can just, maybe I want to say that bit, and then say, I don't know, image and uh, crop to selection. That seems to work. I could then do maybe image, scale image, a bit smaller, maybe 600 by uh, 400. Maybe I'm going to use it for web purposes. And that would seem to work. Obviously put our scaling back up to now 100%. And we maybe manipulate the image, maybe change the levels a little bit to get it a bit, uh, bit uh, richer there, pull a little bit more contrast out of it. And as you can see, this is working pretty well. You know, it's, you have got reasonable adjustments. Okay, I've made the image smaller, but it does work. And you've still got things like your filters. We could do, I don't know, um, where's the one that does the lovely things on this light and shadow? There we are, say, um, Let's put a lens flare on. Let's make the pie look uh, exciting. Have a lens flare on that USB port. Why not? Just maybe about there and click OK. And it um, takes a little second, but it'll come along and it's working. This is working, I think, about as quickly as uh, I used to work in Photoshop 3 on a PC probably 10, 15 years ago. So this is a perfectly viable system. You could do decent image editing on your Raspberry Pi. So that's our little bit of a video diary for today, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. So we've got to Thursday, and this morning I was again out and about with my pie, this time at my uh, local art centre where I was making a presentation on the future, and I did it again by plugging in the pie and uh, controlling it with my right keyboard, and it worked very well indeed, and in fact many people were very surprised you could plug in a pie and make a presentation from it just like that. Anyway, it got me thinking about audiovisual more generally, and so this afternoon I want to show you a little bit more about audiovisual on the pie. Particularly I'm going to show you a package called Audacity, which is a free audio editor, very widely used on all sorts of platforms. If you want to install Audacity, just type in this command in your terminal, sudo apt get install Audacity. I've already done that, so I'll close that down. And now in my menu, I've got um, sound and video Audacity, uh, which runs up pretty quick, doesn't it? I'm, I'm impressed with that. We just pull in a uh, recent file. There we are, look. This is just a small music sting. So we'll just play that. And it works, we can play a file. If you're thinking the audio quality isn't quite right, you can hear a bit of hiss there. It's because I'm having to use the composite jack to actually get audio I can record. It works much better when I don't have to fit in all the recording equipment in the middle between me and the monitor and you. But we could, for example, make, say, an amplification change there. We could do an amplify, and it's already picked the maximum level, and uh, all this much. It's got a more powerful end. We maybe like that end bit, so maybe we can say copy that, and of course paste it in, and maybe paste it even again. And it'll down the noise multiple times. I don't think that's the best audio edit in the world. I mustn't save this back. But it proves a principle. Audacity works very well, actually, on the uh, Raspberry Pi under Raspbian. That said, I have tried Audacity under Ubuntu Mate. It does work, but it's nowhere near as responsive. It has got some stability issues. So if you want to do audio editing on your Pi, my strong suggestion is to use Audacity under Raspberry. Well, we've reached uh, Friday, the final day in my Pi week, and I'm back in uh, Ubuntu Mate. I do like Ubuntu Mate. And uh, I've run up here the, uh, the Chrome browser, where I've been using the program I probably use more than any other program in the world, which is a 
Google Docs, the online Google Word Processor spreadsheet storage system, etc. I found my best option for running Google Docs, Google Drive on the Pi, indeed my only option really, is to run it in Chromium under Ubuntu Mate, and therefore I spent a lot of time in this this week. So for example, if I click on here on my video slate, you'll see it'll open up the document. It's not that fast, it takes it a while, it's starting to come in, but to get a functional document you can edit, you wait quite a long while for things to get going on the Pi. This is not a function of the uh, internet connectivity speed, despite what some of the indications may say on the screen. This is simply getting the thing to work. Now, just as this is loading in, I should point out, you're seeing here a document, this is my, my video slate file, in um, the Vedana font. Vedana is not installed natively on the Pi. And to get the Vedana font, what I did was to copy the files I needed to a USB drive, put it into the Pi, and then open that up, and simply click on each font and uh, press install. Didn't take very long, and then I had all the fonts I wanted. So here I have now, I think the document's finally loaded while I was telling you about fonts, and you can see I've got a, a working uh, Google, um, Google Doc, which is fantastic. And there we are, that's my schedule. People always say, what's coming up on my videos? Once the video goes uh, yellow and gets a date, it's sort of locked in. So you can see Raspberry Pi Zero will be coming up fairly soon. And that's because this morning, my Raspberry Pi Zero actually arrived. There it is, look, it'll be featured in the video next week. Anyway, just to prove Google Docs actually uh, works, here's say a document I've been writing this morning, which is about the Raspberry Pi Zero. It's not incredibly fast to work on this. If I go, hello, I am typing in Google Docs. Actually, it's working quite well now, isn't it? But, um, and I think, think it is lovely. Yes, Google Docs works clearly on the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. So there I am signing off with my final sort of software demonstration, Google Docs running under a Ubuntu Mate. So here we are at the end of Pi week, and uh, it's certainly been very interesting using a Raspberry Pi so intensively over a period of seven days, and for all those sort of mundane computing tasks you wouldn't normally think of using a Pi for. Now, inevitably I've learned a few things, not least I've learned a bit of patience. When you click on a program on the Pi it works, but it takes a bit of time to get there and you have to get used to that. I've also, as you probably gathered, had a great appreciation for Ubuntu Mate this week. I've really discovered Ubuntu Mate is a very, very good Pi operating system. It isn't best for everything. It was not so good for audio editing under Audacity, but when it comes to browsing experience under Chromium, and when it comes to running things like a GIMP, I've really been very impressed indeed with, uh, with the Ubuntu Mate operating system. In terms of problems, the one thing I didn't expect to have problems with was the SD card slot on the Pi. I've been switching operating systems a great deal this week, often taking the card in and out many times a day. And on some occasions, on one in particular, I went, my whole Pi's blown up, oh no, what am I gonna do? And it was actually the fact the SD card wasn't making proper contact. So I've learned that in addition to the old computing adage of uh, if it doesn't work, turn it off and turn it on again, um, often on the Pi, it can be if it doesn't work, turn it off, take out the SD card, put it back in and turn it on again. And at least for me, that has worked. But anyway, that's now it for another video, which I think will be rather long. I've got a big editing job over the next day or so to get this up for you this week. And I hope to talk to you again about the Raspberry Pi Zero very soon.